Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brandon here for RC Nightmare. Today we got another X01 video for you guys. I know what you're going to say. Where's the running video? Patience, please. We're working on it. Got to wait for the right weather. We want to make sure we get a really good video for you guys. Meanwhile, we're going to show the importance of what you want to do before you take it out and run. Now, prepping an RC car for you know high speed runs is very important, especially in a car like this, but it really applies to all your RCs. Before we take them out and bash them, it's really easy not to do this, but it's a great idea to check them over. Check all the hardware, make sure everything's working right. A quick look ahead of time can save you a lot of busted parts and you know maybe end your day too quick. The reason it's a little more important on this guy, well obviously it does 100 miles an hour, so that can be lethal, but it's only gonna be running on the pavement and it's only gonna be doing high speeds. So we wanna make sure that it's ready to go. Any loose part on pavement's really gonna spell disaster. We get a little spoiled running on grass and dirt, you know, it kinda soaks up a lot of hits if something goes wrong. So we wanna take a little bit of extra prep time and of course we wanna make sure that it's absolutely ready with a full speed of 100 miles an hour. So first thing, body's gotta go. We wanna look at hardware, basically everything. Just grab your wrenches and start looking at any piece of hardware you can see in this thing. All the pieces of hardware on the bottom, I'm gonna check all these to make sure they're tight. Again, just grab your wrench, just stick it in there and just start checking them. Hand checks are better than anything. You know, you never know if one's worked its way loose and they will over time. You don't know if from the factory just didn't get tightened down all the way. So it's a good idea to run through all these screws. I'm gonna check each one of these individually especially on a car like this where these screws are basically keeping the thing aerodynamic as possible. So we just go through it, spot check these, give them a nice little hand torque. You don't have to crank on them, you just want to make sure they're snug. And again, periodically check them over time. If you're not doing this, chances are one will rattle loose or you lose a piece of hardware. And it may not be disastrous right away, but you know, over time these things will add up and before you know it, your car's out of commission or you, even worse, you hurt someone. So keep checking on those screws on the bottom chassis. On the top, we just want to give a little hand check. Check shock towers, shock mounts, make sure everything's functioning right. You know, just get a little once over. Most of the time you can do this just by looking at things. You'll see if something's not working right. Just getting your hands on everything that has to move is a great way to check it out. I know that my receiver box is open. I understand that I'm actually working on that right now, so you don't have to point that out to me. Other things like motor and gear mesh, very important to check. We're gonna take our tool, just double check the motor mounts, the screws on them, make sure they're nice and snug. Check your mesh, make sure you got a nice little tick in there, and I do, that's perfect. Make sure your batteries are down tight. You know, these all seem like really kind of trivial things when you think about it, but you forget to do it over time, and again, you can really be frustrated if you just forgot one silly little thing that'll end your day. And the most important thing on a car like this are gonna be wheel nuts. Traxxas has their handy dandy tool here, so I'm just gonna use that. Just give them a good torque with your hand. These are lock nuts, so I know that they're not gonna come loose easily, but I wanna make sure that they're down tight. You don't want to just assume every time. It's, you know, it's a few seconds to check. It's really an easy, safe way to make sure that you have a good time. I love their special little castle hex there. All right. So I know those are tight. So I know the car is ready. You know, I've looked it over. Check all the little set screws. Make sure everything's snug. Nothing seems out of place. Once you're good to go with that, it's time to prep this specific car for 100 miles an hour. There's two things we have to do to the hardware. Front bumper. This front bumper has, as you can see right here, a little bit more aerodynamics design to it. This is really like a front wing. When I replace the front bumper piece with this guy here, it's going to add a lot more downforce to the front of the car. Without that, you'll get too light. As soon as your front end comes up and air gets underneath, this thing's going to take off like an airplane real quick. So these are very important, these little air dams here. We want to make sure that we get that installed first. And I'll show you how to do that on a close-up. The second thing is the pinion gear. This is the high-speed pinion gear, 34 teeth, pretty big boy. You want to install this right away and make sure that it's snug. This is a lot of rotating mass. It's a pretty high gear ratio. So again, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a sec and how to use their innovative motor mount to do it easily. That's all you need to do in hardware. There is software to be done. We'll have another video for that to show you how to lock 100 miles an hour. But let's get started on the swing first of all. All right, guys. This is the first step to replacing the front splitter, front bumper, front wing, whatever you want to call it. Traxxas calls this a splitter. They call these canards, and again, these are really just like a front wing to help keep the front end planted. So to replace the stock one with the one rated for 100 miles an hour that you absolutely have to install to do those speeds, you want to remove these three screws here. So we got two on the sides, one in the middle. Pop them out, and this thing just kind of pushes right out of here. Nice little uh, slotted slats here that kind of hold it in place nice and sturdy. So just rip it out. Stock splitter's gone. Install the aftermarket piece. This is, again, for the 100 miles an hour and just kind of slip it in there like so. We're gonna tighten these down, and now we know that we got enough downforce in the front of the car to keep it planted at high speeds. 
Remember, you cannot forget to install this thing if you want to do any kind of high speed running. In fact, it's not a bad idea to do it anyway. Can't hurt. Alright guys, I got my front splitter installed with canards. Again, the X01 absolutely has to have this optional piece on to do 100 miles an hour compared to the stock front piece, front splitter, front bumper, whatever you like to call it. You can see a lot more downforce is going to help keep it planted. That's the first step. The second thing we have to do to hit 100 miles an hour is to replace the pinion gear. The stock pinion gear is a 15 tooth, the stock spur gear is a 45 tooth. We want to leave the 45 on there and we're going to install the optional 34 tooth pinion that's, in pinion that's included with the kit. Now the beautiful thing about this new X01 is this micro adjustable motor mount. And what that allows you to do is set the mesh very easily without having to guess and check. You know, some of you might use the paper method. This thing allows you to do away with that. So remove the wheel nut, pop the wheel off. It's going to give you a lot easier access to it. And then just to keep this uh, spring out of the way, I'm just popping the lower spring cap off and pushing it to the side, just like so. You don't have to remove the whole shock, you can just get that out of the way. Okay, save a little time here. We are going to remove the two motor mount screws. We want to take these all the way out. And then the beauty of this design, again, it's aluminum motor mount, so it's slotted. It's going to slide right out. We want to remove this air duct here to allow the motor to come off all the way. Just this one screw here and it pops right off. And then lastly, we want to pop off the motor wires. Carefully when you're pulling on these, these are six and a half millimeter full, full style bullets, so they're nice and tough. You want to pull straight up if you can. Remove those, air ducts out of the way, and just slide the motor out. And be careful here because the temperature sensor is still attached, so you don't want to rip that. You can slide it out and just carefully set it up. And again, you can see the, sen the temperature sensor wire harness there. And set the motor up like so. They can have a nice little slot here, get to the pinion without taking the motor plate off. Pop the, or this is 14 tooth pinion, I'm sorry. And we're going to install the 30 tooth. We're going to have to reuse the set screw here. A little bit of Loctite on here, so that's good. And the way they have this designed is you do want to just snug this pinion with your tool all the way up against that little slot that they gave you for the tool and that will line it perfectly with the spur gear. Just push it flat, tighten it down nice and snug, don't twist it too tight, you don't want to strip it. There we go. I'm going to slide this in now. Again, it's going to be real snug with the spring but it gives you just enough clearance. Turn this to give you a little better view. You can see how close that is but I can just sneak it past. Now we're going to use the micro adjustable part of this mount which is basically a really long set screw right there. I don't know if you can get, see a shot of that, get some white on it. I'm going to put the tool on that guy, push the gear all the way against the two gears together so they're mashed, and just start turning this in until you get the perfect mesh set. You just have to look at it, turn this in, and it's going to start separating the two gears exactly as you need them to get that perfect mesh. You're going to have to turn it in a little ways. We are going from a 14 to a 34 tooth. And there I, I can see it's starting to separate. So now I'm going to hold the mesh together with my hand. I'm going to squeeze on this until I get it just where I want it. Perfect mesh set. And that's the beauty of that. Now all I have to do is hold this tight. I don't have to fight it. I can put in my two motor mount screws and she'll be ready to go. Make sure you tighten these down nice and snug. This is not something you want coming loose at these speeds. Probably destroy your motor. Just like so. And again, just hold pressure on it. The set screw takes care of the mesh. You just got to make sure that you keep it snug. You don't want to come loose. Again, torque these just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. They got lock washers on them, so they should hold nice and, nice and snug. Plug in your motor wires, white on the outside. And there you have it. So that is the optional pinion gear. I'm going to pop this stuff back on. Very important. Now when you have the 100 mile an hour pinion gear installed, this is for high speed runs only. So you cannot be just driving around casual with it, you will overheat it. This is a very steep gear ratio for the motor to handle. So it's only designed to do speed runs maybe for a few seconds and that's it. So I got my gear snug up real tight. Pop the wheel back on. 
with the wheel nut. Snug it down. You guys are good to go. There we have it. This thing is ready for 100 miles an hour. All we have left to do, and that will be in the next video, is take care of the software that limits this thing to 50 miles an hour. So keep an eye out for that. All right, guys, there we have it. We've installed the two pieces of hardware that are necessary to do 100 miles an hour. I checked all the hardware on the vehicle to make sure it's nice and snug, make sure my driveline was tight, my gear mesh is good. Nothing, you don't want anything coming loose or rattling. Now you can see it there. Giant pinion. Nice front wing here, splitter with canards, if you will. She's ready to rock and roll. In the next video, we're going to show you how to unlock the 100 mile an hour software and give you a little bit walk, give you a little bit of walkthrough on the Traxxas Link software. So, thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you soon.